So, you know, a few episodes ago, I made my goalkeeper take three kicks. He scored against Wrexham. We won 1-0. And he also scored an 88th minute equaliser against Wickham Wanderers to give us a point away from home there. Over the far, he's taken a few free kicks in his time. But then he scored two in a row. Literally, the 88th minute there against Wrexham. The 88th minute there against Wickham. I don't know what got into him. He started to score some free kicks, which is absolutely lovely. Anyway, welcome back to Football Manager 2022 with Dover Athletic and hopefully Obed Afari scoring some free kicks today. We're going to be playing Bolton and Coventry in today's episode. We are up into second place and there you can see our form, which actually hasn't been great, but also hasn't been too bad. We beat Barnsley, we drew with Plymouth, we lost against Cardiff, we drew with Wickham, then we beat Wrexham, Rotherham. Blackport and Lincoln, all basically teams down the wrong end of the table. Bolton find themselves in 14th place. Coventry are challenging for that final automatic playoff. Play I always say that. Automatic promotion spot that we currently occupy on 68 points. A win in both of these matches could put us into a very, very good position for potentially getting automatic promotion once again. Before we get into those matches, though, we've got some transfer business to talk about. Will Cocolo has left the club and moved up a division to go to Championship side Reading. I don't know how we managed to get him in League 2 and then managed to sell him for £50,000 it's going to rise up to to a Championship side that he's actually getting into the team for. I don't know how we've managed to do that, but fair play to Will. And because of that, we've had to bring in two players on loan deals. Peter Barton is the first one on loan from Blackburn Rovers, our feeder club, and he can play in most positions. Left back, left wing back, left winger, striker, attacker midfielder, and apparently is a centre back. He's five foot six, he's not a centre back. But yeah, Pete Barton's in, and he has been fined about three weeks' wages or something stupid like that, even though he's getting paid nothing here, because he loves to go out on the beer just before a match day, doesn't he? We've also loaned in Don Everett from Bristol City because Omar Bogle really wanted us to strengthen our strikers. And I looked at Don and went, you're pretty good. He's getting paid absolutely nothing. He probably will get recalled though because, uh, yeah, Bristol want him to be playing as, uh, I think, a complete forward or something stupid like that. Um, he's not going to. We also loaned out Morgan Beardmore to Notts County. Anyway, let's play Bolton. The starting lineup then for the Bolton Wanderers game. It will be Obed Afari, the goal-scoring goalkeeper in the sticks. Elise, Pambu, McGuinness and Barton in defence. I always do this. They're the wrong way around. There we go. Much better. It's going to be Paul Searle and Jake Forstakaski as the midfielders with Hirula, Young, Williams and Omar Bogle as our strikers. We have three players, potentially four players. No, three players that have scored Double figures. Kean Pennant is currently on seven as well for the season. We've got Forster Kasky on eight, mainly because he takes penalties. So we are looking pretty good when it comes to scoring goals. Defensively, I think, is where we let ourselves down, particularly for some reason, left backs. Now, this isn't really the main event of the episode. The main event will be the match against Coventry, a team who are fighting for one of those top two positions. But this isn't going to be easy. We've got a, a corner, sorry. It's Leon Pambu's there. Big Leon Pambu, fourth goal of the season, three minutes on the clock. We've taken the lead against Bolton Wanderers. And let's hope that that is just how this game goes. For Sukaski with a free kick now in a similar position. And this time it was Mark McGuinness, but heads over the bar. Just under nine minutes played and already a couple of decent chances going our way. It is obviously keeping us up in second place. If we win this game, we will stay in second place. We need to keep an eye on what's going on with AFC Wimbledon because... Ideally, they drop some points somewhere in the next few matches and potentially they drag themselves into this little scrap. Williams is in on goal, straight into the hands of the goalkeeper. So AFC Wimbledon, Dover, Huddersfield, Coventry, Charlton, Burton, Cardiff and Crewe arguably are the ones in this battle, although Cardiff, Crewe and probably Burton a little bit too far away at the moment. Forster Kasky with a free kick again on the far side. It's Amos who's going to run it clear though for Bolton. Towards the left-hand side is Healy. We've got loads of white shirts back. They really should just be stopping this high like dead. And uh, nothing's going to happen. Innis outside the penalty area as a very loud motorcycle goes past my house. Healy, Leon Pambu with a wonderful little slide tackle. And Afari blasts it upfield. Is this a counter-attack to the counter-attack? It is. Williams is in on goal. And Williams has tucked that away. Superb finish from the former Spurs man. His 14th goal of the season. 2-0 up. Away. Away. At home, even. Against Bolton Wanderers. And this should be three points. Forster Kasky with a corner just before half time. Are we going to make it three? We might. It's a penalty. I mean, Forster Kasky's stepping up to take it. Is he the best penalty taker? 
No, he's arguably one not one of the worst, but he's not one of the best, is he? Jordi Hirula or Omar... I mean, Bogle's the boy, isn't he? Let's get Omar Bogle stepping up, the 33-year-old who has signed a new contract, which is probably too much money and for too many seasons. I've accidentally given him a two-year deal. I wanted one more season. He's got two. Bogle steps up, sends the keeper the wrong way. It is going to be 3-0 against Bolton at half-time. And the second half, we don't even need to bother trying. Well done, lads. We've had a lot of shots. I'm happy with that. Looking at the match ratings, Brad Young, Pete Barton, the left wing. Something doesn't just doesn't work on the left wing, and I don't really understand why. Bolton have themselves an early chance, though. Innes to Allers outside the area. Back to Bradley. Innes again with his yellow card. Oakley Booth all the way back to the defence. It's turns. Lumps it upfield towards Healy. Leon Pambu with a headed effort, though, gets the ball clear. Searle to McGuinness. The Arsenal, or former Arsenal man, goes for a run. So now at least on the right-hand side. Plenty of former Premier League footballers, or Premier League Academy footballers playing. Forster Kasky to sell. Back to McGuinness. Forster Kasky again. Is this going to be a chance for us? Pambu to Forster Kasky. Back to Pambu. What's going on, guys? We're just passing it around, and it's looking lovely. Are we just going to go for a long ball forward eventually? There it is. Bogle flicks the head down, finds Jaden Williams. Long-range chance from Williams, and it goes just over the bar. It remains 3-0, but we are absolutely dominant. Right, I'm wondering, do we do ourselves some changes? I mean, very little has taken place in the second half. We're going to do Brad Young off for what we'll do. We'll put Pete Barton as a winger. He's slightly better as a winger, and then we'll do Tim Hayes as our left-back. Do we also do Jaden Williams for Don Everett? This is, I think this is Don Everett's debut. He might have come off the bench before, actually, but I'm not quite sure. We are going to hopefully see something from this highlight. Bradley kicks it upfield. Barton forward. He's not moved into his new position just yet. Rowe's going to go for a run. Aaron Rowe stops and plays it back to Alice. Now Healy, through ball, finds Aaron Rowe once again. He's being chased. He goes for an effort. It's over the bar, and it remains 3-0. And now all the substitutions should take place. But Bolton do have a corner, though, which uh, wasn't really what I was expecting. Strange corner, very strange corner, kind of short. It's off the training ground. Aaron Rose made it 3-1. I was too busy saying that was a strange corner to really pay attention to what went on. This looks like it was something that was planned, but I know you can't plan this in-game. So, I mean, that was it was a good finish, to be fair. It's a good goal. Let's not throw this away, guys. Let's try and get ourselves a fourth. 15 minutes left to play. And if Bolton managed to make it 3-2, we are going to probably shut up shop. Rowe to Hackney. Where are you going to go? Down the wing. The goal scorer Rowe is going to run into that space on the ground towards Allers. Leon Pambu is not paying attention. Allers goes for goal over the bar. Remains 3-1. Final 15 minutes. Straight into another highlight. What's going on, guys? Is this just lots going on? Or is this potentially Bolton getting themselves a chance? Don Everett's controlled this well for us into the penalty area. And that the low knees effort is blocked by the goalkeeper. It's going to be a corner. Forster Kasky's going to be the man to take it. Left footed. Leon Pambu's probably there at the front post. And there's Leon Pambu and he's hit the underside of the bar. Leon Pambu could have got his second of the game. Instead, it's going to be another chance from a corner. Forster Kasky obviously going to be taking it again. Left footed towards McGuinness. And Pambu was also there just sprinting his way in. Jordi Haruda's going to keep this one alive, hopefully. Buddy? Nope. Nope. Not, not what we wanted. Oakley Booth nicked it off Hirula, plays the ball through to Healy. Healy's been absolutely flattened by Mark McGuinness. Good, good job, Mark. Into the final 10, I'm looking at potentially doing our final sub. I assume we've got one more sub that we're able to do. Everett to Barton, through ball. Bogle's just not got the pace as he turns, has played it all the way back to Bonham. I think we've got, yeah, we've got two more subs to do. We've only done one, haven't we? It's Everett with it. Here is the sub, Everett, to Searle. Bogle does manage to somehow get there first. Bogle's effort hits the bar as well, and it goes off for a goal kick. We've hit the woodwork at least twice in this game. Let's do ourselves... We've done two subs. Tim Hayes was the other one. That's the other guy. Let's do a change. I think Forster Kasky, Jack Earring, is going to come on. Forster Kasky's just an old man, isn't he? Still not quite finished. There is a lot going on in this game against Bolton, but luckily we still currently have the lead. Hirula heads the ball forward, but Watts has got it now for Bolton. It's this man, Adabiojo, possibly. Definitely wasn't his name, was it? It definitely wasn't. Cook, forward, to Allers. Healy collects it. Goes off towards the left. Pambu's with him. Backwards to Cook, crosses the ball in. He's managed to somehow get there at a corner. It's. I think that was a very good block, actually, from Hayes. It's going to be a corner for Bolton. 
four minutes of normal time plus injury time towards the front post. Hayes gets it clear. Hayes, for some reason, is on a 6.4 despite the fact he's done two bits of very good defending there. Another corner. What's going on in this game? What? No, 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 no. We do not do this. It is 3-2, and now we need to shut up shop. Is this a good idea? Nobody knows, but this is what we're going to go for. So 5-2-1-2 is what we're going to play. Hayes has dropped in to be a centre-back. Barton's dropped to be the left-back once again. Everett as an attacking midfielder. Hiwuna and Bogle as our strikers. Arguably, I should probably kind of keep that, maybe. Should we just keep Hiwuna on the wing? Four minutes of injury time. Are we... Oh, no, no, no. Don't be doing this. The corner comes in. It's towards the back post. It's hit the bar. They've hit the bar. Searle so is going to go and get the ball clear. That is going to end that highlight. How are we so close to losing this? We've won the game 3-2. I mean, an XG of 3.24 as well. Bolton suddenly turned up in the last, what, 20 minutes or so of the game. We've managed to pick up the three points. That was a lot closer than it needed to be. 36 games played and we are still second place in the table. One point clear of Huddersfield in third. Coventry up next. This is a six-pointer, really, for Coventry. If we can win, this should mean it suddenly turns into a three-horse race for the final two promotion spots. And obviously, we are going to hopefully be one of those two horses. Three horses. Words. I'm really good at them. Back for match number two, then. At home against Coventry. Second place versus fourth. And we have fitness issues. Kind of as expected, to be honest. This is what happens when you play gag and press football and you don't really have much more than maybe, what, 18, 19 players? In goal, it will be Obedafari, even though he wasn't very good in the last match. It's going to be Elise McGuinness or a Hayes in defence. We drop Leon Pambu because, basically, he's a very tired boy. Jack Earing and Nathan Martin will be the midfielders because our normal central midfielders are very tired. It's going to be Adam Brown and Jack Spong on the wings because our normal wingers are very tired. And Don Everett and Kean Pennant will be our strikers because our normal strikers are very tired. You see what we're getting at here? Who's Adam Brown, you ask? Is this guy. He spent the first half of the season out on loan at Torquay, who I'm not sure what league they're in. The Vanarama South scored 15 goals. I've recalled him and decided that he should be a right winger because he's left-footed, inside forward and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, so far he's come back, played three games, scored a goal for us as well. So Adam Brown, hopefully, is going to be a half-decent addition to the squad. So the second of two former Premier League sides, admittedly Coventry's was a very, very long time ago. Bolton's also was quite a long time ago now, wasn't it? But two former Premier League sides, that's what we're going to go with. Coventry have themselves a chance, and Gallardo hits the base of the post. Obedafari takes about seven minutes to get off the floor there. They really should have scored from that. AFC Wimbledon have already taken the lead in their game against Fleetwood, which means that they are now going to be potentially something like seven points clear. Fiolic's effort is that is a wonderful finish from Fiolic. Don't know if that's his name, but he's curled that into the back of the net, and it is a 1-0 to Coventry, 13 minutes played. And I feel like this might go a similar way to the AFC Wimbledon game in the last episode. Earrings corner for us towards McGuinness at the front post. And McGuinness's effort goes over the bar. 18 and a half minutes on the clock. And we've had ourselves one chance at the very least. We are 30 minutes in and we've already got three yellow cards. Brown, Elise and McGuinness. I mean, Brown and Elise, I think they're both on the right hand side, aren't they? That's a concern. And already we are at half time. Not a huge amount is going on. Um, what was that? Get your acts together, guys. You have not been very good at all. Oh, better is looking nervous because I normally shout at him if he's playing badly. I mean, we've got some poor performers here. What is this? I mean, actually, Kim Penner's doing right. I say doing right. He's on a 6-6. Nathan Martin's not doing so hot either. I'm furious with you guys. Good job, Stuart. You've demotivated most of your team now. So Adam Brown is a right winger. Uh, isn't, it's not working, is it? It's definitely not working. Cody Drama's throw. Pochettino back to Drama. Now Ben Sheath. Pochettino in the area, crosses in, Keenan Davis is there, and Keenan Davis makes it 2-0 to Coventry, and that is effectively game over. Straight after the goal, we've got another highlight. I'm worried. I'm definitely worried, because I feel like we might just lose the ball, and it's going to be 3-0 pennant straight to Pochettino, and this is my concern. Ben Sheaf finds Cody Drama on the right-hand side, loads and loads of space, runs into the penalty area, over to Fari, makes a save, and runs it off for a corner. What an absolute clown. We are going to see the corner as well. It is Fiolek, the first goal scorer, whips the cross. Keenan Davis is there. Ben Sheaf is there as well. I think Obenafari made a crack and save. At least it looked exciting. I don't know if he needed to do it. 
We are going to hopefully get there first. We do Jack Earring at two at Richard Lalise. Are we now going to end the highlight or is it going to carry on? Ball forward towards Key and Pennant. Doesn't manage to get there. McGuinness with a dangerous slide tackle for a man on a yellow card. Gallardo's one on one with the keeper and Gallardo hits it wide. Right, let's do some changes. Brad Young is going to come on on the right-hand side for Adam Brown because he's been appalling. Jack Spong has been appalling, so Pete Barton's going to come on. Don Everett's been appalling, so Jaden Williams is going to come on. There's a theme. Free kick for us. It's McGuinness to take it in the centre circle. We've got, what? what is that, 20-odd minutes, 23 minutes left to play. Brad Young has the ball, plays it on the ground to Pete Barton, and Barton's effort goes wide off the post. Still 2-0 to Coventry, but at least we've had a highlight go our way. And now Coventry are going to have one go their way. Corner comes in. It's a header clear from McGuinness. We're going to get there first as well through Kean Pennant. Where's he going? Richard Elise taking a long time on the ball. Earring to Pennant again. Across to Nathan Martin. Williams isn't going to get there first. And now Coventry can just take their time with it. Gallardo back to Chinedu. Across to Paddy McNair. Paddy McNair is playing in League One. I mean, this Coventry side, if I'm perfectly honest is a good team. There are some very good players in this side. McNair goes all the way back to the goalkeeper Phillips. He's going to take forever because nobody's closing him down and he does kick it eventually over the halfway line. Wyadu? Wyadu's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Goes out wide, crosses it in. Keenan Davis is there. It's a wonderful block from McGuinness and it's cleared to find Pennant but the highlight ends. Coventry have uh, been very, very good, haven't they? 13 shots out of 24 on target. Only the two goals. We've got an injury as well to Jaden Williams, which we can't do anything about because we've used all of our subs. It is going to be a 2-0 defeat then against Coventry. We do still stay in second place, but Coventry are now just one point behind us. That was not a good performance and not a good result. Oh, and to add insult to injury, quite literally, Jaden Williams is out for six to eight days. That is not good. Um, McGuinness needs a rest. Also, Jack Earing... Uh, Jaden Williams and Dominic Ballard are happy that we're now a League One side. That's good, I guess. So, next episode, what we are going to do, we are going to assume that we are in the playoffs. Next episode, we will come back for potentially the final few games of the season somewhere around here. So, we've got Swindon. I realise you can't see it because my, my face is in the way. Swindon, we've got Charlton, we've got Crew, Fleetwood, Burton and MK Dons. We're going to come back at some point around there if we are able to get ourselves automatic promotion, which I feel like might go down to the last game of the season, if we suddenly drop away, we might just go straight into the playoffs. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like. Hit the subscribe button as well. If you are new to the channel, I'll be back next time with the final, hopefully, episode of Season 6 with Dover Athletic. If not, we're going into the playoffs. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.